Hey everyone, St. R. Edwards here again. Welcome back to the Ski Channel, Swift Coding for Everyone. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about UI controls. But first, there are a few more UI views that I did not discuss with you in the last lesson. And those are the navigation bar, the toolbar, and the tab bar. So starting off with the navigation bar and the toolbar. So in your objects library, search navigation bar, Drag that onto the screen, place that there. Also do that for toolbar and drag that down at the bottom. So up at the top of the navigation bar, this bar basically helps keep your app organized. So as you can see, you have the title here in the middle is what you're probably used to seeing. You also will usually have a back button on either side and a forward button as well. Down here at the bottom in the toolbar, you could place different bar button items and we can search bar button items and you can place these down here in the toolbar and you can also put a fixed space in between them if you just drag out this fixed space bar button item down here and each of these buttons can perform a different action so if you click on one you can go over to the attributes inspector and under the system item, you can select that. And one can be edit, one can be the add button. You can do cancel. And you can do something else, let's do save. So all of these different buttons can perform those type of actions when you connect it to your view controller from the storyboard to your view controller. All right, so that's toolbars and navigation bars. So I'm going to get rid of this. And the last and the last one was the tab bar. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the last one is the tab bar. So if you search tab bar in your objects library, you can drag that out into the screen. You've probably seen this more more often than not in the App Store where currently I believe the setup is if you look at the bottom of the App Store app, you'll have like a today icon and text uh, text you know that says today you know at the very bottom, and then you'll have games, and then you'll have apps, and then you you have your updates, and then you also have a search bar as well at the bottom of the App Store app, and that's what you would see. So you can use those. You can use a tab bar for different functions um, in your app, and it can take the users uh, to a different to a different screen. And so, so they can manage, uh, you know, like multi-function type of an app, basically. So that's what tab bars are very useful for. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of all of these things. We're gonna go on to UI controls. UI controls basically connect the app and the user. So really, you know, when you have a control on your screen, you know, whether it be a button or a segmented type of control, the user will click on the button or the control and it will trigger a function you know or an event in your app and so it's just basically that communication link you know between the user and your application all right and so one of the first ones we'll talk about is the UI button so down in your objects library type in button drag that out on the screen place it anywhere you'd like and I'm going to say play for my button As you can see in the attributes inspector, you've got the type system right now. You can change that to different things if you were, if you wanted to. The configuration, the title was plain. You can change that to attributed as well. I changed the text already to play. You can do your font if you click on the T and you will go to system and you can go to custom and it'll default to Helvetica new, but a lot of the Apple apps or what they like is using Avenir, but you can use whatever you like, but Avenir is just, you know, what they like. And so I'll go with, I'll go with Avenir. And as you can see right now, it's the style is book. So I'll just change that to, I'll go medium. We'll go medium and I'll keep the size at 17. So I'll show you a little trick. 
So with the play button highlighted on the canvas, uh, since the words are not appearing, what you can do is instead of dragging it out, if you hold command and then you do the equal sign, it'll just you know pop out to where it shows you know all of your text. You'll probably want a little bit bigger anyway, but that's just a little quick trick that you could use for your apps. You can also do the text color, shadow color, and you can also do the image and background. Now the image is something that should be relatable to the action. You don't want anything just random. So say for instance, like if, if this were the play button, so I could take the text out and I could replace it with an image that I have in my app in my assets folder over here. So you can do like the sideways triangle for the play button or whatever your case may be. Another action that we're going to talk about is the segmented control. Now this is something that you've probably seen in the app store as well. This is where in the app store you have the top grossing free um, and like paid apps I believe in the app store and so you know that's three button this is only two buttons but you can add it so with this one you could you know take the user as well to like different functions to uh, different tabs or views within your app as well so you can connect the segmented segmented control and you can look at the different properties that you're able to change here in the storyboard as well over here in the attributes inspector all right another ui control are text fields so type text fields or text field and drag it onto the storyboard and i'll just make this a little bit bigger drag that out and what text fields allow you to do or allow the user to do is type one line of text into your app you know if you were building an app that had phone numbers or something for some reason you know whatever contact information you can have uh, you, you know them put their email addresses here or phone numbers whatever the case may be and what's cool is, is that you can utilize the placeholder text property here and the way it will appear is it will appear in like a light gray text color so in, and it will be in the background and so you know that kind of gives your user some information you know in a short brief description on what this text field will, you know would be used for down here, you can see the different text input traits that you could use, the capitalization, correction, smart dashes, smart quotes, spell checking, keyboard type, or so like that. And you can see the different types of keyboards you could select depending on what you're trying to do in your app. You got the number pad, the phone pad, name phone pad, email address, decimal Twitter. So there's different types of keyboards that you can select that you could play around with and try as well. Another UI control is the switch. So we'll drag that out into the storyboard. This is a very simple control, on and off. Right now it's defaulted to on, as you can see. You could change that to off. And as you can see, it just moved to off. But you know, on shows the green, the off doesn't. So it'll be whatever the, the default color is. So if I had, if we had the normal view background color of white then you know it would just be white for the off button we could have used this in our first guided light our first guided project which was the light app so when the background was white it would be on it would be green and then when it was off and black you know you know we could could, could have changed it we could have tapped it um, by creating an IB action and connecting it to the view controller and it would have done that for us so so that was a way that we could have enhanced that project another ui control that is used often uh, in ui kit is the um the slider so we can use the slider so type slider in drag that out into your storyboard and what sliders allow you to do allow your user to do is change the volume if you're using a, a music type of an app or, or an audio app you can change the you can change the volume, you know, slow and, you know, just very subtly, you know, you can do that. So that's pretty neat. Or if you were using, you know, like a dimmer uh, type of an app, you know, you could change the brightness of something. And uh, so that's pretty neat. And if you look over here in the attributes inspector, you've got the value set at 0 0.5 is defaulted by. You could change that if you would like. You've got the minimum value. You've got a maximum value. 
and you also have images you can place in there as well to represent the minimum image and the maximum in image and uh, some other things that you can do with UI sliders. Uh, one of the last things that is very popular, I'm going to get rid of a few of these, is the UI uh, picker, the UI date picker. So we're going to type date. And this is pretty cool. You'll see this. It'll default to the current time for me, time to date. So as I'm recording this video, it's January 28th. And as you can see, my at my locale, it's 3.46 p.m. out here on the West Coast. So that's pretty neat that it, you know, it defaulted just like that for me, uh, January 28th, 2018. And over here in the Attributes Inspector, you see that it's currently set up in the date and time mode, but you can change that. The locale's default. So uh, I'm here in America on the West Coast. And so it's just, you know, it knew, you know, knew, it, it knows where you are. So that's pretty cool. You can change the intervals. Right now, it's set at one minute intervals. You can go from there to 30 minutes. You can set a minimum date and a maximum date. The timer, you can do the countdown seconds. So, those are a few of the UI controls that are very popular in UI Kit. That is it for this video, guys. Make sure you do the lab at the end of this section and answer the questions. The lab is very important. It's a bit of a different lab, but remember, you get out of this what you put into it. So, you know, just make sure you put forth your best effort and, you know, just give it your best. All right. So this is St. R. Edwards with the Ski Channel, Swift Coding for Everyone. Thank you guys for checking it out. Oh, and one more last thing. One way that you could find more information about, you know, UI kit and other, you know, documentation is by checking out the developer.apple.com site. You can check out the human guidelines, the human interface guidelines and uh which are very important which is what apple likes to see you, you know us design apps like you, you know because it provides the best user interfaces uh for the users so check that out and also you can find the documentation there on the site as well but you can also access the documentation from the help menu like we did uh you know a few videos ago as well all right but you guys take care i'll see you in the next video